I'm stuck. So we're back out exploring and Johan's been very busy, look. Look at all these stones he's dug. And here he is. Here we go, how about this then? This here is the latest little passion project. Um, thanks to the landowner, I've been able to dig open this level. Uh, out of all the levels that I've ever dug open, this is the one that's been blocked for the longest. So it's been around 200 years since this was last open based on old mine plans, old ordnance survey maps, etc. It's a late 1600s level that was used in right at the beginning of when gunpowder was used. Um, and that's all we know about it. So this is going to be a proper adventure, a proper lost mine that has been unexplored for around 200 years. So about, you know, 1820, 1830. There's a nice draft blowing out, so we know that it communicates with some other workings. So this should be good. Let's go and find out. Let's explore it. So I started digging up there three days, uh, three, three days of spent here. Um, after about five minutes of digging, hadn't hit bedrock yet, but could already feel um, the draft blowing up. So this shows that we're not going to have any lack of oxygen in there because there's a fresh draft of air blowing out from a shaft higher up on the hillside. So that's good news. Um, so we've hit, uh, hit bedrock kind of around here. This is bedrock here, very shaly. Uh, mudstone. We've got a nice rib of quartz here, which is possibly what the miners were actually following. And then on the last day, we finally broke through. So after about six or seven feet of, uh, of digging vertically. And once again, it's uh, th thanks to the landowner for allowing this dig and uh, whatever may lay within. The spoil heap is decent sized, so we're hoping for a decent length of level. And as said, it dates from the late 1600s and it's not been explored since around 1820 or 1830. So whatever we find, everything in here that you're going to see on camera has not been seen for around 200 years. Here it goes. Here it goes nothing. <laughs> like a shoot. There's a bit of water I can see, but it doesn't look deep. Are you in? I'm in. On the level? It forks. Oh, wow, it forks. Oh, wow. Both ways. On my way. <laughs> I need to lose some weight. <laughs> I'm stuck. A bit tight. Yes, yeah, too tight. Keep coming. I get both no. Right, we're in. I'll decide to stay outside on this one because it's a bit tight. But we can see that we've got a really nice hand chiseled roof here and it's following a huge quartz vein. So it's kind of like a half coffin level following this massive load. Well, not a load, but a quartz, quartz vein. But I don't see any shot holes yet. So we might be talking about a coffin level. Oh yeah, there are shot holes. Here we go. So it's a powder assisted level. <laughs> Look how high the water's been. <laughs> the water's been right up there. Chose a good time to explore. Yeah, water's certainly been very high in here. See where the uh, the muddy colour on the wall has been completely underwater versus the clean, the relatively clean roof. Coming 
mud. Quite thick mud as well. It's getting stuck. <laughs> ah, I can see the end of the mud up here. So judging by these shop holes, this is indeed late 17th century, so it's late 1600s. And we're coming up to a very well-defined hanging wall. Look at that. Very nice hanging wall there, the side of the load. And then a very, very small clay joint to the load running along the roof there. Very nice. It's driven along the load. Still with that very well defined water bar. So keep an eye on this wall in case there's any dates, because these are the sort of walls where you do tend to find engravings. Bedrock floor. Nobody's been here for a long, 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 long time. Oh, and suddenly jumps uphill. That's weird. It's just gonna jump us uphill quite steeply here. Why is that? I think it's because we've intersected a very small load and it's now drifting it uh, east. see it in the floor as well. There's a load in the floor. So they've been drift they've started drifting this. Yeah, there's some quartz. No visible minerals. There's a nice little shot hole up there. Bit of a dog leg. Oh, it's meandering all over the shop. This is very, very old. Yeah, more minerals in the roof. Wow. It's meandering all over the place. And we're getting into more mineral bearing ground. This is lovely. We got us some um, breccia, load breccia here. See those smashed up pebbles of country rock cemented by quartz? That's breccia and a nice exposure. And we've got a little bit of lead here, a little bit of uh, argentiferous galena, that's lead ore. That's what the miners were after. And we continue. None of us have any idea what's down here. And we are stepping where no man has stood in 200 years, approximately. Ah, and here's the end. Oh. Yeah, we got a collapse here with some timbers. Yeah, this is the collapsed rise going up into higher workings. The draft blowing down from the surface and some water as well. So now that we've been to the end of the level, on the way back, I'm gonna be scouring the walls for any indication of dates or anything like that. Lots of nice hydrozincites on the wall. Small piece of wood here. Could be the end of a tool, a 17th century, a late 17th century tool. I think 1698 was the date that I've got for this level, and the only record that survives of it, uh, 1698. All right, head back out of this. Lovely exposure right here. Look at that load exposure. Coming from the roof 
all the way down across there to the forehead. So what they're doing is they're crisscrossing from small load to the other. short section of coffin level there. That's been made without gunpowder. This short little section. You can see the pick marks on the roof there. On the way out, just found a very small nugget of galena there in the wall. A little small nugget of lead ore. The load is very sporadic here, there's another piece of it up there. All over there. The miners didn't really find enough to warrant stoping or extracting the ore. They were just drifting through all these different little veins, checking them all out before reaching that big stope at the end, which is now all collapsed back down there. Oh, whoa, this is what we were hoping for. We've got engravings. Right, let me put this down. These are old. We've also got engravings here. Uh, presumably a sort of tally counting. Yeah, we've got engravings here. Tally marks. I shine the torch a bit better, they might be able to see them better. There's tally marks here. Tally marks there. And up here, now then, the question is, what does that say? It looks like an L up on top. And I'm gonna have to um, analyze those. These are definitely tally marks, probably late 17th century tally marks. Um, and we've got some very, very early engravings up here. Cursive writing, double writing, engraved into the rock. Um, this looks to me like a small area where the miners would have counted uh, or kept track of how many um, wheelbarrows of ore were coming past. There's more here. We've got tally markings all over the wall. This is superb. This is exact oh God, look, they're everywhere. Wow. This whole wall is covered in tally marks. Okay, right, I'm gonna have to cut the camera because I'm gonna have to take pictures of these and have a proper look at these. <clears throat> also found another amazing feature just here by all these tally marks on the wall. And looking at this area here where you can actually see where a miner leaned against the wall and the, um, the material, his linen, jacket um, has left a print in the mud on the wall. So we're at about shoulder height here. So probably he leaned against the wall and this is his shoulder leaning against the wall. And you can still see the, uh, the, the crisscross pattern of the material of the miners, either flannel or, uh, um, or such, his shirt. So once again, this is probably late 17th century, very early 18th century. This is spectacular. And I'm not able at all to make out any words here. Back, if we move back over to this feature, we've got an L at the top there. And this curious little sort of, almost like a peanut shape, like a circle with a line through it. If anyone knows what they might be, please let us know in the comments. Um, there's some more uh, tallies right there. We've got an L, what appears to be a T or an I-T underneath the L, a H perhaps. And then three or four of these kind of oval, wonky ovals with lines through the middle of them, with more tallies underneath them. I have no idea what those circles, what those circles could be. Camera doesn't want to go much closer. And there's another H down there. Um, so that there's no words, unfortunately, and regretfully, no date. I'd love to get a date on that, see how accurate that report is. Oh god, here's another one. I just found another one. Is this... Oh, that looks more like a word. 
W don't know if you can see but we've got another word right there you know what that looks like that looks like W Davis W Davis yeah that's what that looks like I'll take a photograph of that as well and then some uh, more markings here made by the end of the chisel. Right, let me grab that signature. We're back into squelchy territory here. Haven't found any more engravings. Although those are pretty good, I mean, geez. I might find more yet. But the walls, we're now below where the water level used to be, so the walls are now covered in a layer of sludge and sediment. So it makes finding any engravings quite a lot more difficult. You can see the water line up there. So quite possibly during flash floods, this level fills up altogether because this stuff looks quite fresh, it's very wet. So it's quite possible that this level, we chose a good time to come in a drought and <laughs> explore it. Oh, there's a drought. Oh, and I can see daylight. Not far from the entrance now. See how uh, Al's doing on the uh, back outside. So there's massive quartz veins. There's the entrance. There's massive quartz veins that the, uh, the miners were following up the portal seem to rapidly disappear once we're actually underground. Here's, here it is, right up here on the right. Just coming up to it. But it disappears down into the floor. Mm. All right. I think this was a gold mine if I didn't know it was lead, judging by this quartz. Because normally, Adits following big quartz veins like this are te tend to be trials for gold. So before we head out, there's this little alcove here on the left, uh, which is a little aborted attempt to follow another one of these quartz veins exposed in the portal. Nothing much in there. So we'll uh, we'll head back outside. Why didn't fit, but here comes Johan. Did you enjoy that? That is one tight squeeze. You okay? Yeah. Shame I couldn't get in, but hey ho. Well, there was, it was a very, kind of a long, meandering level, very old, almost a coffin level. If I can get out of it. <laughs> That's tight. Jeez. There you go, can you grab my phone? Ouch. <laughs> 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 Out. How about that? Awesome. <laughs> right, let me recuperate. So, the debrief. It's... It is what we thought it was. It's a late 17th century level, uh, powder assisted level to be precise. So that means it's at that transition period when gunpowder was just becoming more common um, and they were using it sparingly to get through hard pieces of ground. Also with the traditional gads and chisels and borers for coffin levels as well. And it crisscrosses through a mass of different small veins and stringers and eventually reaches a collapse at a shaft higher up on the mountain. However, the highlight was, as you've already seen on the way out, found that lovely wall of engravings, of late 18th century engravings. Uh, late, yeah, got that right, didn't I? Late yes. 17th century 17th engravings. 17th century, yeah. uh, On the wall, um, but no dates, unfortunately. So judging by the time this level was worked, that's how we've come up with that date. And literally hundreds of tally marks. What was unusual about them was rather than one, two, three, four, five, there was a line all across the top and they were branching down from the line continuous like that 
uh, which I've not seen before, but they're clearly man-made and they're all over the wall. So with the odd letter L, a couple of Zs, and a curious oval shape with a line through the middle. So if anyone, I'll say again, if anyone does know what they are, let us know in the comments, that odd little oval shape with a line. Um, after that, I think since... Al, you didn't get to, you didn't quite fit in I didn't in there. fit. Let's go in one I can fit. So we're going to go back to the cars and clean up a bit and then we'll go somewhere else that Al can fit as well. Let's go. <laughs>